I can't pass a construction project with a big red crane without wanting to uh, jump out of the car and take a picture. I know that's just me, but everyone associated with the planning and execution of these projects should be familiar with the basic tools that are required. This particular crane is a real uh, workhorse. It is a crawler crane and it gets that uh, name because it is mounted on these caterpillar tracks. The, the crane is uh, mobile. It can travel short distances on those tracks, but its mobility is limited. It certainly can't go out on the street and move some distance to the other end of the project. That would not be feasible. But within this limited space, it can travel back and forth and service all of the work within this limited area. It's very high capacity because it is mounted on these Caterpillar tracks. The load is spread out, makes the machine very, very stable. It is the perfect tool for these circumstances. The other feature I will mention to you is that it has a lattice boom. The boom comes in sections. When this crane arrives on the job site, it only has uh, one a small section attached to it. And then the boom is assembled on the job site to whatever length you need to satisfy the requirements of your project. So this is a crawler mounted crane. There are many similarities with this crane, but the most noticeable difference is that this crane is mounted on rubber tires. And this is called a truck mounted crane. It also has the lattice boom, which needs to be assembled on the job site. And when the crane is actually making a pick, it must be supported on its outriggers as shown in this photo. The crane really has a very limited capacity on the rubber tires and it, it should never be used uh, on its tires. So the outriggers must be put in place before you make a pick. Because it's on rubber tires, it is much more mobile. It can travel some distance. But in reality, if you've assembled a very long boom at the end of this machine, to get out on a public street and travel, the boom has to be a flat out horizontally. And you can imagine it's uh, very difficult to maneuver. So under some circumstances, it might be relatively uh, simple to get from point A to point B, but out in the city street, I can't really imagine a fully assembled truck crane uh, traveling around with freedom. The third variety of crane differs significantly from the first two, most notably in that the lattice boom has been replaced by a collapsible boom. This immediately solves the problem of mobility because this boom will uh, simply collapse. The machine is mounted on rubber tires and this is the most maneuverable and mobile a crane that you can select. So you see them out on every job site because of their versatility. With the boom collapsed, this can travel at uh, highway speeds. And then when it gets to the site where it's needed, it can extend the boom and go to work in a matter of uh, minutes. So this makes it a uh, extremely useful tool. There's another important feature here, perhaps not noticeable to the layman, but very important to the contractor. There's a single cab which houses the operator. And the operator operates the crane from this position, but he also drives the crane around from this position. The result is that this tool is manned by only one person. 
whereas the previous truck mounted crane requires two people. So you have immediately cut the labor force in half and you've achieved far greater mobility. And that's why you can't go by any construction site without seeing one or more of these hydraulic cranes. They are routinely called cherry pickers and perhaps the that's the name that you know them by. These machines also have outriggers and should always operate with the outriggers extended. The only trade-off in using a hydraulic crane, especially one of this size, is that it does have limited capacity. However, this is a, a modest size hydraulic crane and you can get a hydraulic crane in just about any capacity you want. So here's the other extreme. This is a hydraulic crane. It also has a collapsible boom. Of course, when you look at it, it looks about the size of a locomotive. Nevertheless, you can collapse the outriggers and you can uh, drive along the highway with this. Although my guess is when you have selected a machine of this size, you probably need uh, permits to drive down the highways. This certainly looks like an oversized vehicle, but I've gone to the extreme. The hydraulic cranes are available in a range of sizes to uh, fit your needs. This crane would be limited to one a single massive pick and then you would send it away and replace it by a more versatile crane. I've often seen a crane of this size or perhaps uh, somewhat smaller in uh, downtown Manhattan. During the weekend they might close the street, and bring in one of these cranes and the crane can reach up to the roof of a building and probably uh, for the purpose of replacing an HVAC unit up on the roof. So if that's it, if you need one pick and you're going to confine the activities to, to one day, this would be the uh, perfect tool for that application. Here is a hydraulic crane being used to take down a portion of a pedestrian overpass the roadway below it has been closed and the work is being done at night. This is a, I guess I would call it a mid-size hydraulic crane. It's not that small cherry picker that you see all the time and it's not the Goliath uh, from the previous slide. So this is a more uh, normal size crane readily available and it was called in to do this one pick. It's the perfect tool for this. It uh, travels to the job site at highway speeds. It comes out here, extends its outriggers, and it's uh, set up and ready to go to work in a matter of minutes. With the outriggers extended, you have to realize that this has a very large footprint. The footprint can get larger still when the machine swings and the uh, back end of the machine, the counterweight of the machine, can extend even beyond the outriggers. It's a common mistake that planners have a situation with limited space and they assume that a crane uh, can work in this small space, but a crane needs much more than one lane. It, it can fit in one lane while it's traveling with the outriggers collapsed, but once the outriggers are extended and it's ready to make a pick, at a minimum that would occupy two lanes and more typically especially with a bigger machine it really would occupy two plus lanes so you need to keep this in mind if you're planning a special pick like this one now everything you need to know about cranes is available online there are catalogs available from every manufacturer. I'm not trying to promote any one manufacturer. They are available by everyone in the industry that supplies cranes. 
it will give you everything you need to know, the weight of the crane, the dimensions of the crane, and you need to just satisfy yourself that whatever it is you're trying to do is well within the reach of a readily available device. The illustration on the cover shows the machine on outriggers. That gives you a little better sense of the footprint that it's required. The catalogs are filled with information, probably much, much more than uh, you really need to know. But if you are planning a special pick in a demanding environment, it, it could be small, it could be surrounded by other structures, then you need to assure yourself that machines exist with the capacity to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. And illustrated here is a low chart which shows the capacity of the crane at every possible reach. In other words, as you reach further and further with the load, the load has to be reduced. All of that is defined in every possible configuration for every machine. As uh, designers, you don't need to get into the details, but if you're making a special pick in a challenging environment, you need to reassure yourself that machines are readily available to do what needs to be done on your project.